With the announcement of the retirement of Representative Ileana, uh, Ileana Rusleyton, a gaggle of contenders suddenly appeared from both parties. They stepped forward trying to claim her seat in Congress. And in fact, we've had many of the candidates right here, and we have that opportunity again today. Maria Elvira Salazar is a veteran reporter and anchor on Spanish language television. She is a Republican from Coral Gables who's running for public office for the first time. Welcome. Great to have Thank you here. Yeah, Wonderful to answer. be here. I love your set. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you have you. a lot of experience on TV well, sets. Well, that's correct. Yeah, that's the way I made a living for 35 years. Well, and that and is... Now? <laughs> now, well, yeah. now, journalism, to, you know, you, you are the one who asks the questions, and now you want to be the one who has the answers. How is that going to happen exactly? Well, I'm going to mm -hmm. try to answer the, as best as possible with the truth, not as the way the politicians... Uh, we have heard the way they have answered for so many years that sometimes they talk, they talk, they talk, and they don't promise. I'm not a politician. I'm a journalist that has stepped up to the plate, and I think that's the way I can serve my community best. At a campaign event on Friday that I attended at uh, Casa Wancho, Wancho in Little Havana, you made immigration a prime topic. And you said, I'm just going to sort of summarize briefly what you said essentially was that the 11 million people who are in this country undocumented but have lived and worked and not broken the law there should be a way for them to have legal residency in the u.s now your opponents would say wow that's amnesty what do you say oh no no that's not amnesty what i'm saying is that the system allowed for those people to stay 7.7 .7 million people out of the 11 million undocumented that live in this country do not have a criminal record and they have been living here for more than 50 years. I believe that there is an overwhelming agreement in the Republican Party that those people need to have some type of legality. I'm not talking about citizenship. I'm not talking about amnesty. I'm saying to give them some legal... Legal re resident status? But not, but not enough of the agreement in the party for there ha to be enough votes to pass any kind of reform. The Republican has Party it. has an outstanding opportunity to be, or President Trump to be for immigration what Nixon was for China. If we want to be, it could be done because the base has been taken care of. Let's secure the border in, in any way, shape or form. And let's, let's give some legal status to those people that without a criminal record that have stayed here. And then let's put, let's put to rest this immigration mess that uh, it's, it's really creating chaos yeah. within yeah. the party and in, and, and in the country. Excuse me. And the corollary here are the thousands of people in this community and across the country uh, from um, uh, Haiti, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Guatemala, who have come because of natural disasters, the earthquake in Haiti, who are here under TPS. But that is ending for all of them by July of next year, you are saying they ought to be able to stay as well? If we have an immigration reform law, we'll take care of the TPS recipients, we'll take care of the DACA, the parents of the DACA, the unaccompanied minors, the everybody that that is part of this mess that we're talking about. Okay, but so as long as we're talking about this and the rhetoric that you don't want to continue, how? Because the devil is in the details of those things. And so how do you take care of all those people and still come up with some immigration policy that many in this country will not consider to be amnesty? That, that's that been such a difficult thing to get over. By so how, what are the details of how to we do that? We were talking about the dreamers at some point. We were talking about giving the dreamers from 10 to 12 years ty a type of legal residency. Well, we could use that to give the dreamers obviously their parents and other people that are helping the economy because also we have to understand that sometimes with the low unemployment we have at this hour sometimes we have more jobs than hands you know maria we've had uh, there are so many people in this race there's uh between democrats republicans and an, and an independent and so many people have very similar views about all of these issues uh, along party lines you know, the veteran Congresswoman Ileana ross Leighton is a moderate Republican, um, had a very successful tenure, very big on human rights, civil rights. Take an opportunity and distinguish yourself. How, how do you align with that? How do you differ from that? What makes you different from the rest of the Republicans in this race? 
Well, uh, I think that you would have to ask the voters. Well, you and We're look and look at the and look at the polls. Oh, come on! You you know what sets you apart? You think <laughs> you are qualified? You you've got a graduate degree from Harvard? Well, the uh, Kennedy School. I yeah, mean, he's you know, answering the question. You know. uh, well, <laughs> I mean, well, go ahead. I, I think I have uh, I have the trust and the uh, credibility that I have earned for 35 years uh, in this community. Uh, with the because they have known me and have covered those stories with utmost integrity so i think that the possibility of having done that i've been a a personal eyewitness and that empowers me yeah. uh, in the eyes of the voters and in the eyes of washington to take those stories and try to change them yeah. for the better well one of the stories that you did among hundreds was an interview i think 1995 with fidel castro it may have been the only interview i think uh, he gave to an American Spanish language journalist. That's correct. Although Bernadette Pardo did stop him on one other occasion. Anyway, one of your opponents in this primary, Stephen Marks, has turned this into a advertisement. And let's run a little bit of it. It is in Spanish, but it shows you in 1995 interviewing Castro. And the point that he's trying to make here is that you seem kind of smitten by Castro. You're smiling, you call him a world historic figure, a revolutionary, and Mr. Marx seems to be saying, you know, she's not tough on Castro. Oh, come on, despicable what he's doing. It's despicable because that editing has been manipulated because the translation is not correct from English to Spanish because the ad has two minutes. Um, I have been one of the, probably the staunchest and the most, um, one of the most um, hardest critics of the Cuban revolution on the air, Spanish television, as you said, and for this guy to come and say that I am a communist, I mean, I am livid, not only because it's it's conniving, because it's not true, because it's manipulated, uh, that the video has been manipulated, and on top of that, my attorneys have asked the stations to pull it off from the air because it does not comply with federal rules. But let me tell you something more, it's very suspicious because it's very conniving and it's so very suspicious. Suspicious in terms of where the money came where, from that's to correct. run this? I, I'm going to leave that up to you and for you to do a wonderful investigative reporting that you've done. But in reality, what's happening here, and if, if to come and, and, and accuse me of being a communist and manipulating the story in that interview, that it's an hour long and it has many segments where I'm very tough on the dictator. So it's it's I'm I'm very I'm very upset. Really quickly before before we run out of time, TV time you know all about. Oh yeah, that's uh, right. In the news, a the tyrant, the <laughs> the president's meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin, and apparently his invitation to visit uh, the United States with him. W weigh in on that from your perch as a GOP candidate in South Florida. Trump is a very unconventional president, and I've said uh, many times over that we have to pay attention to what he does and not, I mean, to what he says and not what he does. I am enamored with the system and with this country. I believe that the American electoral system uh, worked, he won by the rules, and he was the result. We need to treat him with respect because he represents the institution of the presidency. Represent the office? The office of the presidency. Presidency, yeah. And, 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 and I understand and I have reported on Trump for, for a few years now. And we know that some people do not agree with what he's saying, but I still believe that we should not use any personal uh, insults and we should treat that the, the Oval Office, and as you said, the presidency with utmost respect. You know why? Because there is no other country in the world like this one. We have institutions, we have Congress, we have the laws, we have the courts, we have the Supreme Court, we have yeah. the press, and we have the bureaucracy. Yeah. And we have the Congress, and you want to be part of it, so and I will be, And I will be calling him out whenever I have to, but I will be saluting him whenever he does something good for the United States. Great to have you here. Maria Wonderful. Lara. Thank you so Great much. Pleasure. Invite okay. me more often, please. Well, perhaps Done. we'll invite you back with the Democratic nominee, debate. if that's the for way sure. it turns out. Whatever the voters say at the end. All right. Thank Thanks you so very much. much for your invitation. Thank you.